Welcome to another video. I got this package here. Where's the camera? It's down here. I'm trying to be healthier, so I'm sitting on the floor. All right, I guess uh, we're doing this on the ground today. Now this is a package very excited about. This is another box inside of that box. <laughs> you know, right? And why don't you take a guess what's inside this box? Another box. No, seriously, this a box inside of a box inside of a box. All right, that's it for today's episode. Thanks for tuning in. No, I want to see what's in it. I've been waiting for this for a while, man. Show us. C300 Mark III. Close up time, baby. Shoulder strap. We have ourselves a power cable. Top handle, monitor mount. This is the same size monitor as the C500 Mark II. It's pretty nice and big. Lots of screws and hardware things. Of course, they give us a nice big BPA60 Canon battery. These are nice because they're big and they actually power the camera for a good amount of time. Of course, a charger. And here it is. Oh yeah. It's so beautiful. I think this camera has a lot of potential to be our A camera. Hey, so are we camera. just not wearing pants today? Well, I never wear pants. But you do realize this is a super wide, right? Yeah. These, these are the types of things you're supposed to tell me before we start shooting. I sent you an email last night. I don't read emails. What the? If you were to tell me, I would have at least tanned my legs yesterday. Oh my God, there's so many things jiggling right now. <laughs> I can't focus. Happy? There we go. Oh yeah, way happier. This whole area kind of looks like the C500 Mark II. We have two CF Express Type B slots, audio controls right over here. And let's charge up this battery and just start shooting with it, shall we? All right, very first shot with this C300 Mark III. And oh my gosh, it's looking really, really good. These skin tones, holy crap, this looks so good. What if just all our vlogs look this good? You know, Carrie, tell us about our day. I went and bought some plants. <laughs> I'm in love with this picture. It's nice and rich. It's not too saturated. It just, this is straight out of the box setting. So let's look at Here. Sam real quick. I haven't switched it into C-Log 3 yet. And this looks freaking good. Holy cow. Okay, now just look around. Oh, it's on a different level, isn't it? Ooh. You like it? I love it. Dude, it oh, looks man. so good, huh? Now the first shoot we did with the C300 Mark III, I did get a little bit nervous because I did see a red overheating icon come up. And I was like, oh crap, this shouldn't be a problem with their cinema cameras. But turns out that's just kind of how it works. Now I have it programmed so when the camera's not recording, the fan speed is at max, so it's blowing out a lot of air right now. As soon as I hit that record button, it shuts off for as long as possible. And as soon as it starts to get hot in there, the fan will come on at low speed, which you can kind of hear, but it's not that bad it hasn't really interrupted any of my audio coming out of this microphone so if you start recording with this and see that red icon come up don't panic it'll go away after the fan gets to blow out a little bit of the air another thing I noticed is the battery life is a fresh battery in here and it's saying it's gonna get about two hours of record time which you know isn't bad but I remember these BPA 60 batteries with the C300 mark II. if I had two of these I can probably get through a whole day of shooting because it lasted you know over four hours on one of these batteries batteries, but this and the C500 Mark II definitely is a bit of a power hog relative to the C300 Mark II, so you'll burn through this fairly quick. I'm really impressed by the C300. I felt like the autofocus was incredible. <laughs> I'm coming from Panasonic, so it's like, you know, a man coming out of the desert and like gets a taste of water, uh -huh. and of course it tastes phenomenal. Are you thinking about getting one of these? I have definitely been looking at them because I feel like they can give an image quality that's almost on par with a Red or an Ari but they've got the usability of a Canon. Plus the body's pretty compact and I just feel like they're reliable. And like Derek said, the autofocus on this thing is awesome, but I wanna say it's actually more like an A minus because it doesn't seem to lock on as well as the Canon mirrorless cameras. In certain situation, it does tend to lose focus for a couple seconds. And it only really happens when there's a lot going on in the frame and the subject constantly moving and turns their back and all that. But if it sees a face, it'll lock onto it and even if the subject is doing this, it's, you're not gonna have any issues. It's spot on. Opposed to these mirrorless cameras from Canon, I feel like they lock on so good no matter what kind of shot you throw at it. Now you guys know how much I love built-in ND filters. This camera, we've got a magnetic ND filter on here, so definitely wanna keep that on. But of course, one of the great things about these cameras is that it's all built in. Now we have a two-stop, four-stop, and a six-stop ND that we can toggle between, but we could also do extended range where it stacks these ND filters and then we could get a eight stop or a 10 stop. And the option of going all the way up to 10 stops might sound excessive, but it's great if you wanna run fast lenses. Like I wanna go up to an F1.8. So I'm gonna go ahead, 
pop all the way up to 10 stops here and now I've got all that control. Now, usually when we're shooting on the FX9, it's nice because it has an electronic variable ND, right? So we can dial in exactly how much density we want in there, which is awesome, but it doesn't go nearly as high as 10 stops. So there's give and take. Also, check this thing out. This thing here is called the Squish. It's designed for monopods like this. This is the Steadicam Air. Love this monopod. When you pair it, you can kind of adjust the angle of the camera a little bit, but it is kind of a strange feeling being able to wobble it like this on a monopod. I don't know, I still have to play with it a little bit more and I'll let you guys know if I like it later. Another thing I'm trying to get back used to is that this is a super 35 mil sensor, not full frame. So your focal lengths are gonna be a little bit different depending on what you're used to. But there are also a lot of advantages to super 35. I mean, you could use all kinds of different lenses that you can't use on full frame. Like the Sigma 18 to 35 seems to be a pretty good option for this camera if I'm looking for a compact lens. And it does have interchangeable lens mounts. So right now it's an EF mount, but you could also swap it out for a PL mount. Between EF and PL, there are plenty of lenses that will fit on here. So I don't think lens selection is gonna be much of an issue. This is a 10 to 22 EFS lens. This is a lens specifically for crop sensors like this one. And there we go. And since we're not nearly as fast as an F1.8, let me pull off these NDs and, oh, maybe I went too far. Pop it back in. Now we're at 18, but now I can go all the way out to 10. Oh yeah, there we go. Perfect, I don't see any vignetting around the edges, so I like that. I am seeing this microphone though. That is really wide. And the autofocus seems to be working just fine, and it's a fairly inexpensive lens. How you guys doing? Having a good day? How about you, Peter? So check it out, with this combo, it's wide enough to vlog with, huh? My arm. Hurts. Yeah, and when I go out and film myself, it's nice to have the ultra wide angle so I can stay right here by the camera. I can check my frame dial in settings and also the microphone's like two feet away from me. So probably sounds pretty good. And check this out, Canon M6 Mark II, 4K little mirrorless camera. We're doing a giveaway with this thing to one of you guys because we have a sponsor in the house, Audible. By now, I'm sure you already know that Audible is the place to go and get your audiobooks. I've been a member for years and love their services, so happy to have them as a sponsor. Now they've recognized that we have some new norms that we're all trying to adjust to this year. So they've opened their doors to stories.audible.com. Did I read it? No, wait, I went the wrong way, huh? So it should be this way. I listen to all my audiobooks now, okay? I forget. And there you will be able to stream hundreds of their titles completely free as long as the quarantine lasts. All these titles handpicked by their editors, a good combination of education, entertainment, classics. I'm tired of looking at screens all day, so it's a great way to relax while still being productive, learning, or getting entertained. I think it's so cool that Audible is doing this. There's no catch. You go there and click stream. You don't have to log in, create an account. There's no ads, nothing. So I'll throw that link down there in the description. Definitely worth checking out. I mean, why not, right? Another URL you might want to know about, audible.com slash sleep. Notice how I went the right direction this time. <laughs> they partnered up with Thrive Global to create these soothing experiences. Perfect for drifting off to sleep in, helping you meditate. Carrie and I recently started doing audio guided meditation sessions right before going to sleep. And it really does help take your mind from going ah, and really just brings it down. And it's really nice and relaxing. And then when I wake up in the morning, I've been listening to an audio book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That's what I've been listening to this week. And another audio book was just recommended to me, Talking to Strangers. So that's next on the list. I'd be interested to see if that can help me be a better interviewer. You know, if I go around filming people, I wanna be able to ask the right questions and try to get into their mindsets. You wanna check those out, 30 day free trial. Link in description, audible.com slash potato jet or text potato jet to 500, 500. I am so comfortable here. I don't ever want to leave. I think one of the big advantages of the C300 Mark III is that we have dual pixel autofocus even when we're in 120 frames per second, which is great for when you're doing run and gun style shooting. Like the monitor is good, but it can become a little bit tricky to pull that perfect manual focus, especially if you're at like an F1.4, right? But now I can just switch into the SNF mode, set my frame rate to 120. We're still in 4K and I get that dual pixel autofocus. So it makes pro level 120p 
very easy. So I love, love, love that. Did I say love enough times? No. Audio setup wise, I have a Sennheiser 416 up here. In the second channel, I've actually been using the Rode Wireless Go. So there's two XLR microphones that you can pull right here, but there's also a channel three and channel four recording at a lower audio level. So in case I need to record audio that was clipped, I have those backup channels. That's always nice. So what I like to do with it is that I can record Sam, but since I have this microphone right here, it can also record my voice because I tend to do a lot of talking. So I could be like, what's up, Sam? So whenever Sam makes strange sounds like that, we have the 416 recording that. And then we have this microphone here recording my voice. Because of course the 416 super directional. So if I'm pointing it away from me and I'm talking, this is what it sounds like, which doesn't sound as good, right? So having this channel right here is kind of nice. And I'm actually really digging this setup. Like if I have to record a street performer or something, I'll just plant this next to them and then I can go get my wide shots. I could just clip it onto Sam and then now Sam. Ladder, 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 just so I can watch. <laughs> Obviously, depending on what kind of project you're shooting, you're gonna need different audio needs. But for this kind of YouTube run and gun style shooting, I found this really awesome. Like I said, it's easier to pack away nicely. It's just this one screw here. So you just rotate that with your thumb and this whole thing just slides right off. So really easy to pull apart if you need to throw it in a bag. Now, when it comes to the image stabilization, unfortunately, I'm having the same issues I had with the C500 Mark II, actually the same issue with this EOS R. So even though the camera itself isn't moving right now, it looks like it's moving because that digital image stabilization thinks that mozzarella is the subject that should be stable. So whenever mozzarella moves, the environment looks like it moves. And I wish they were able to use the gyro information from the camera to stabilize the image instead of analyzing the image. Although now that I think about it, I'm not even sure if there is a gyro in this whole camera because it doesn't give you a horizon leveler or whatever you call it. You know, like those bubble things that tell you when you have it level. That's still one downside with these cameras. But out of all the things we're testing, I think the dual gain sensor is the most exciting thing about this camera. So let's go test the dynamic range on this thing. I think it's gonna be really freaking good. So let's go. On the C300 Mark III, I'm excited to see a dual gain output sensor. That basically means the shadows are captured one way to make it so there's not that much noise in the shadows and the highlights are captured a different way to make sure that there's a lot of saturation still there in the highlights. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this shot of Jonathan. The camera is exposed to his key light and his fill side is about two stops underexposed. The bright strip of light on the door is one stop over. So there's a range of exposure in this shot. Now looking at C log two and C log three, we can generally go about three stops over and about three stops under. And that's generally the range where I feel like you have some chance of recovering the image. C300 Mark III shoots raw internally and that's where I was really able to push it. I even did one shot where I went five stops underexposed. And just to give you an idea of how much that is, this is a five stop ND. If I put this on this EOS R and I try to recover this image, this is what it looks like. And even in C log two and C log three, five stops under, it's not gonna be a good image. But when you shoot raw, you actually come up with an image, lots of noise there, but I ran it through a denoiser just for the heck of it. And look at that. You can kind of salvage a shot that was five stops under. So that is where I was really blown away. Armando, you're a C500 shooter, right? I am. You want to try that out real quick? Holy your mic real quick. crap. First this impressions. <sighs> I like this camera. I mean, I'm a person who says this all the time. Oh, full frame, full frame. But even with this lens, like the Sigma on Super 35, you still get that shallow depth of field. Canon cinnamon line right now is rocking. They're yeah. rocking. Their cinnamon oh, line is amazing. I mean, I just love the size of this thing. The dynamic range on this is killer with that dual gain sensor or dual gain output sensor. Yeah. With good lighting and with the right techniques and knowledge, you can make any camera look amazing. True. But when you don't have that control, then no matter what happens, like if, for example, if a giant unicycle happened to just ride past for no, out of nowhere, <laughs> then, you know, you can capture it with no, what, why, why'd you pan away? What? Oh, what, what a Quincy, <laughs> speak of the devil. That's one thing I really like about this is even when the lighting's like, oh, it still looks pretty dang good. Now I do keep talking about how much I love the size of this thing. And sure, you might look and be like, that's still a pretty big camera, but I'm comparing it to something like the FX9 where now you can kind of start to see that, oh, this doesn't look so bad. The 
the FX9 does have a longer lens on there right now, but just try to look at the body. And when you need to shrink it down, you can just pull off this handle. You just spin that with your thumb and then check it out. Like I plan on taking this into the middle of nowhere. So I wanna be able to chuck it in a backpack and hike with it. You could also break down this FX9, but it'll never get as small. And also you're gonna require some tools to take this top handle off. And this viewfinder kind of sticks out here. So it's really not designed to be a portable camera. What do you guys think about a comparison video of these two cameras? I mean, I think they're both in the same ballpark in terms of price. Oh, actually I just looked it up. They're actually not the same. The C300 body is more expensive by $1. You think Sony was like, you know what? We'll make this cheaper than the C300 Mark III. 10,998. I actually really like the layout of this camera because out of the box, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's just a, a few things that I modified. For example, Zebra, I don't really use too much. So you can fully customize all these buttons. So instead of Zebra, I have it set to false color. This is personally my favorite way to get perfect exposure. I also program false color into my thumb button here because I wanna be able to access that false color pretty much no matter how I'm holding the camera. I also set up one of my buttons up here to turn on and off face detect. So when I'm recording somebody, it's nice because it'll track what their face is. And there's actually a joystick right here at my thumb. So if there's multiple faces in the screen, I can just switch between different faces and it'll lock onto that face, which is nice. But let's say I wanna focus on something that they're holding instead of their face. Then I go ahead and press this button that I customized here to turn off face detect. And then I could just tap anywhere on the screen to where I want it to focus. So if you're used to, you know, touch to focus on a mirrorless camera, you have that here and it's awesome. I also made a modification to this grip right here. Definitely something I recommend to anyone with a Canon cinema camera, but check it out. Usually when you adjust your grip, you have to rotate this thing because it's on a rosette and then you can move it and then you could rotate it back down to lock it in. But I put this little plate right here in between the handle and the camera and it has a little button on it. So now I can just press it, rotate, and then I press, rotate. And when I release, it locks in. And it's just right there. So now I can super quickly adjust my grip, which is something I tend to do. But this little plate is something that Condor Blue makes. It does add a tiny amount of plate in the handle, but it's not that bad. For me, I rather have the flexibility to readjust real fast and deal with that little bit of play. Oh, and of course to attach the mic for the Rode Video Mic Wireless, I just screwed on a little hot shoe play right there. So I can go ahead and attach this, perfect. The thing I love about it is that you can use it as a run and gun camera, but of course you can attach cinema lenses, PL lenses, and you could really rig it out to make it a performance camera. The anamorphic features in here. It's interesting that the digital image stabilization also works with the anamorphic lenses. But yeah, that's about it. I wanna start shooting a majority of my YouTube videos on this camera. I know it's a bit overkill, but if you start recognizing the quality of the videos getting better and better, you can go ahead and thank this camera. Anyway, should we wrap this up and read some comments from from my last video, which was all about me switching to the A7S III. I'm just jealous of having that many friends to talk about cameras with. Well, in case you missed it in the last video, I did open up a Discord channel where we're chatting. We wanna divide it up into different locations. So we have Northern California, Southern California, many different states and different countries. And I think it'd be so cool if people ended up meeting each other and doing collabs within their city or state. And it's still a work in progress, but uh, yeah, come join the conversation. Link down below. The dynamic range difference on the beat shot is huge. Yeah, that's probably the biggest reason why I'm going to the A7S III is because of that dynamic range. Canon still has the edge in color science though. Can't deny that. I'm filming on the EOS R right now and I don't even think I need to color grade this. But that's it for today. Hope you guys are having a killer weekend and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. No, I think somebody else does the piece, right? I feel like I gotta think of something different. Yeah, I can't think of anything. So, yeah, bye. bye.